Hi, this is Scott Brick, narrator of the audiobook World of Warcraft, Vol'jin, Shadows of the Horde, by Michael Stackpole. I've narrated over 600 audiobooks, and, you know, the way that you prepare for an audiobook it hasn't really changed that much for me from the beginning until now, except for the fact that there's a lot more emphasis now on making sure that everything is right. At the beginning, being new to the industry, I didn't really understand that what I was saying was going to last a long time. It's creating an, not a written record, an unwritten record. It's creating a, it's a verbal history in a way. It's, people are going to be listening to these recordings for years to come. And so when I made a mistake on an early audiobook, I, man, I heard about it for a decade. So we really go to great lengths to make sure that that doesn't happen. The recording process, basically for an audiobook, and it incorporates the way I prepare, especially on a book like this, it's because we have to do so much work with the author or with the company overseeing the project, in this case, Blizzard Entertainment. If I'm working on science fiction or fantasy, typically what I try to do is either I or somebody that I'm working with gets in touch with the author because these, typically, the words and the names are all made up. They don't appear in any language on Earth. I learned that early on when I was working on the Dune series, especially in a situation with World of Warcraft where the world is so textured, it's so layered, it's so rich, and it's established already on audio. There have been voices saying these words for years, and if I don't pronounce them correctly, then we're going to hear about it. And I, I would just, I would hate to do that. I would hate to pass that along to the Warcraft fans. So basically, that's what the recording process is like. We begin with research. We find out how all these words are pronounced. Then we sit in a studio, and it's typically myself, the producer, who's essentially the director on the book, and the engineer. And as they're listening, I read from the beginning to the end. I think of all the characters in Vol'jin, Shadows of the Horde, my favorite would probably have to be Tirith and Court. I don't know. Maybe it's because he's the only human, and maybe I'm just more comfortable with that kind of voice. With the other voices, we had to listen to samples from the game that Blizzard sent us as audio files, and we looked up other things on YouTube. We, we watched sections of it, uh, the videos that are up online, in order to know, okay, well, what is the accent for this race? You know, how do these characters speak? Typically, that's how the process goes in a book like this. But with Tirithan, he's human. He's going to sound like me. That's just the way it is. And I think, uh, I don't know, there's also just something really grand about that character. There's a reluctance to him, obviously a great sadness that comes out later, but uh, something about him just really got me. To me, when I'm watching somebody on stage or in a film, I'm always drawn to the people who don't speak very much and wondering what is it that's behind that silence. And I think that's what Tirithin uh, did for me at the beginning. That's why he got to me so quickly, was to find out what's going on under the surface there. I'm asked a lot what advice I would give to aspiring audiobook narrators, and I've got two things. First of all, if you love reading, then do it. Pursue it. Pursue it to your heart's content. There's a lot of companies out there, a lot of books being recorded, and you'll find your way in. If you're passionate about audiobooks, then it's the best thing for the industry as a whole for you to come and bring that passion to this job, to this process. Readers love other readers, and I think it matters. I think you can hear it in people's voices when they're truly passionate about reading. The other bit of advice that I would give would be make sure that you're okay with reading for so long at a stretch, sometimes all alone. What we do isn't the most social job in the world. Yes, there's three of us in the studio right now, but there's going to be times where you might be alone. And you need to know whether your temperament is such that you can handle all that time and all that work being in a solitary environment. I think a lot of it comes down to temperament, not just skill. But again, if you love it, pursue it. We'd love to have you.